Hello, hello, and welcome back. Welcome to video two about character rendering in the game engine. Now we have the model imported. Takes me around ten minutes again to get everything in. Uh, I don't really like to have those default materials, so we can just go ahead and delete that and just force delete so that all the shaders are gone. <laughs> okay, and we can start from scratch. Uh, meanwhile, while it's doing that, let's take a look at the texture we did in Substance Painter. Okay. All right, so this is going to be the texture, and that's the thing we need to get out. Uh, so we can go for uh, oops, file, export textures. Here in the settings, of course, we want to go for a format that Unreal supports, which is Unreal Engine 4 uh, Subsurface Scattering Pact, because we do have a scatter channel over here. And Targar is fun, mm, so I'm going to put it into Snip Asset, maybe. Where did I put it? Oh yeah, Maya project. No. Nope. Uh let me just paste in the directory again. That's where it is. Okay. New folder maybe. I can call this guy textures. And then select folder. And that's about it. So go ahead and export all the textures. Uh, meanwhile we can go back to whoops, my machine is a little slow because it's going through all the works. Anyway, go back to Unreal now and grab all the things, Control S to save in the content browser. Okay. And let's see if that's finished. So I guess we can open folder now. And then we just need to grab all the textures and drag them over also to the content browser to import. All right. Okay, um, when they're done, uh, Henri will give you a, a warning in which says that this one is recognized as a normal map, so cool, that's what I need. And you can grab the three textures again and just control S to save them so that they're all saved. Oh, you know what, there's one thing we need to change here. This guy, uh, this uh, occlusion roughness metallic image, it actually has to be linear, so check out sRGB. Okay. Uh, linear is some really ugly like problem that's happening in you know for the longest time uh, so uh, many informations in the computer graphics are represented with sRGB and what they do is they uh, they apply a curve on the image which makes it shifted from the original value um, just to be able to visualize it better and that causes a whole lot of issues when you're rendering especially for those information data uh, you want to check that off all right so now we can start with a empty scene, so file, new level, and empty level. Now we can grab our models and just drag them out into the viewport, and then we can go ahead and change their location to be 0, 0, 0 so they're back to the origin. Alright, there's no lighting, I guess we can drag in a point light somewhere here. Just to, just to be able to see the lighting there. And because characters are supposed to be rendered in a mobile fashion, so the the model and the lights will all be set to movable, uh, including yeah all these things movable. Cool. All right, now we can start with setting up the basic materials. Mm, to start with, I think we can set up the hair first. So to do the hair, we can right click and create a new material. We can call this guy hair material base and then double click to open it. We don't have any texture for the hair. So I'm gonna hold down V button to create a color parameter. I'm gonna call this guy hair root color. Okay and control w to have a copy of that and this one will be renamed to hair tip color now if you do recall i was mentioning that the uv will be you know uh, having the root on the top and then the tip on the bottom so what we can do is lerp it lerp those two colors uh, this one is created by holding down l and click and we connect those two colors to the lerp, uh, lerp right and then we use the texture coordinate and we do a component mask just to get the 
vertical direction from the UV, which is G channel in this case, that goes to the alpha, result goes to the base color. Now we can make the tip maybe a little bit brighter in this case, so maybe, yeah, something like that. Should be enough. We can visualize it now with a plane, as you can see when it's compiled over, you can feel like the bottom is brighter than the tip, right? When that is done, then we can start to change the material into a hair shader. Underneath the shading mode, there are a bunch of different shaders that's pre-built for us, and we can choose hair. Now, hair shader is kind of like really complicated, and this pre-built hair shader is actually pretty good uh, to represent realistic hair. One thing you want to give it, one information you really need to give it is the tangent. The tangent determines how light will be stretched, uh, sorry, how highlight will be stretched. Uh, along what direction based on the UVs. So what we have to do is create a vector here by holding down V and actually just hit holding down 3 and click to create a um, constant value here. And what we have to do is change it to a pure green color. So G becomes 1 and OK. Again, uh, just like what we mentioned before, the reason it's green is because the direction of the hair on the UV space is from top down. That's the G direction and that goes to, goes to the tangent, basically. Uh, if you do have a normal map, you apply your normal map, also blend that normal map with the green, make the G channel all green, and you will be fine. All right, holding down S and click to create a scatter parameter. We can call, we can call this guy scatter, and that goes to the scatter input, like that. And then what else, emissive color, I don't think so. Uh, backlight is useless. Uh, according to their documentation, this is, this is nothing. And I guess that's it. We can define roughness for sure. So I'm going to change that to a new, create a new uh, scalar parameter and call this guy roughness. And for the default settings, maybe default value of the roughness is 0 0.3, max is 1, of course. For the scatter, maybe default value is 1, max value is 1, I guess. Uh, specular can be also defined. Yeah, holding down S and click, and that goes to the scalar, uh, <laughs> specular, and we can also name this parameter uh, specular. And the setting will be default value is one. Slat max, slider max will be one, and yeah, that should be it. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Okay. You could also connect the emissive color if you wanted to, but I don't want it to be glowing. <laughs> so we're going to close that. And then you can see how the shader looks like on the ball. You can see how the vertical direction really helps the, the hair highlight to stretch ar around that direction. We can right click and create a material instance uh, and just change that to snip hair material and just drag that over to the hair. Okay, you can see now it's replacing that hair material. Now it's really bright in this case, so let me double click to open it, and we can make some changes to this instance. We have a bunch of parameters we can check on, and then what we can do is maybe lower down the scatter a little bit to make it darker. The highlight is too shiny, so I'm gonna drag the roughness up and lower down the specular value. And maybe the tip is too bright in this case, so I'm gonna lower that down to something darker, not completely dark, yeah, something like this, uh, maybe even smaller, 0 0.0002, okay, and then maybe lower down the scatter even more, yeah, and then specular more, roughness can be a bit rougher, maybe, yeah, so something like a black hair would behave. One thing that's interesting about the hair is that the hair actually mostly will have its color uh, showed up based on the translucency of the hair strands. The light goes inside of it and then bumping out, which causes the highlights to show up uh, as the actual color of the hair. Um, uh, if you make it really rough, it becomes you know something like that. Maybe I can make it just not as rough. Um, and be lower down the scatter. I think I can make the root also a little bit brighter. Mm, so here the value is 
0.002 for the root and let's see the tip is 0 0.002 also I can make that maybe 0 0.003 and root maybe is something smaller 0 0.001 I don't want it to get something completely black in this case all right and then maybe we can go for um, lesser specular and a little bit you know shinier I guess I don't want it to see a whole lot of grayish color going out mm, maybe a bit rougher All right uh, anyway you can drag the light and move it closer to see how it behaves All right. You can see how when you're dragging the light up and down, you can see how the highlight really resembles uh, a highlight of a of you know normal hair would have. I don't like the snapping here, so let me turn that off. That way, I can move my light freely. Okay. Cool. So that's basically the hair material. You can of course change hair color or whatever, uh, but that's the basic setup. Uh, one thing interesting is that if you drag it back. Uh, to the back of the hair or I'm actually duplicating the light <laughs> and drag it back uh, so if you have a have a light on the back of the hair you can see how it kind of like penetrates through the back and create this like translucency result. that's what hair behaves uh, in reality too but again the game engine is kind of like faking it so it's treating this entire volume as that so that's why you're seeing some inaccuracy here but it's fun for a game right we're not trying to make you know, uh, movie level render in this case. Anyway, let me delete that light and then let's move on to the next video where we can talk about the setup of the skin. Okay, see you next time.